Hello everybody. Tonight, we're baking bread. Hello everyone, I'm Matthew. We're the Scoops. I wanted to try something a little bit different with my bread dough tonight. Now I've done bread doughs before. I'll leave some links in the description below. My general dough is the same that I use for my pizza crust. Uh, I've even made hot dog buns with it. Um, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, one of the key differences that I'm going to be doing different tonight is instead of using water, we use using milk. And there is actually a little difference with the yeast that we're using. So let's go over the ingredients real quick. Once again, this is all pretty straightforward. Uh, first we have our flour. I have seven and a half cups. Now keep in mind, this will make two loaves of bread. If you just wanna do one loaf, just take everything here and cut it in half. Now with the flour, you'll see I've got seven cups here and a half cup here. The extra little half cup that I have separate uh, is gonna be used in the event that I do actually need a little more flour to my mix. Uh, I'll probably actually put a little bit down uh, on the counter when I go through the kneading process as well. I also have two eggs. I have two and two thirds cup of milk, two teaspoons of salt, four teaspoons of instant yeast. Now this is another area that is a little bit different. Generally I use active dry. Uh, what I have today is just instant yeast. Um, they can be used in conjunction. So it's a one-to-one -one ratio. Um, so if you have a recipe that calls for two tablespoons of active dry yeast, you can use two tablespoons of instant yeast. You don't have to change your measurement. The biggest difference actually comes with the fact that instant yeast doesn't need to be activated like your active dry yeast does. You can actually mix it right in with your dry ingredients and it will, it's, it's already 100% ready to go. And then the last ingredient is sugar. Now I don't use sugar. Instead, I use honey. Uh, preferably raw honey. This is raw, unfiltered honey. And it's just gonna be two teaspoons. Now you can use two teaspoons of just your regular granulated sugar. You can even use two teaspoons of brown sugar if you prefer. Me, I like using honey. So the first thing we are going to do is mix our dry ingredients. So let's get this out of the way here. And we're just gonna take all of our flour here. This is seven cups right here. And just pour it in there. The next is gonna be our salt. And of course, our yeast. I'm just going to take a whisk and mix this all up really good. Now once you're satisfied with the mixing, we can continue. Now one thing with the milk. Even though I'm not needing to activate this yeast because it's instant yeast, I still don't use cold milk straight from the refrigerator. I still go ahead and warm it up a bit. What I generally do is I go ahead and preheat the oven just a little bit just to get it a little warm. If I think it's a little too warm, I'll leave the door open just a bit to vent it out and turn the oven off because I'm also going to put this in there to let it rise so it has a nice warm environment to rise. So let's go ahead and get the milk in there. Let's go ahead and add our honey. 
Now my measurement here isn't going to be accurate, but the recipe will call for two teaspoons. And then of course, we add our eggs. And now we're just gonna mix this up until I need to actually get my hands in there and start really forming this up so we can start kneading it. Now if you find that the dough seems a little too sticky, that's where this comes in and you can always add a little bit more. I'm going to continue to work this a little bit first, so don't get too hasty with adding flour right away. Because you can always add more, you can't always take it away. So sometimes I've found that if you keep working it a bit, sometimes some of the stickiness goes away. And I continue also mixing it in the bowl because over time you keep getting more and more of the residual off the bowl, meaning you're wasting less. I actually started doing this after watching Monica make fry bread. And if you haven't seen that one, I'll leave a link to the video for that down below as well. All right, we're going to go ahead and add just a little bit of flour to this. If you do have to add more flour, I suggest doing it just a little at a time. Again, you don't want to add too much. Alright, this seems pretty well mixed up. Now it's time for the actual knead. So what I'm going to do is spread a little bit of flour onto our countertop here and begin working the dough. I'm going to just sprinkle this out a little bit, kind of spread it around because you're going to be kneading this dough for usually about a good solid eight minutes or so. Now this particular dough seems to be a little stickier than normal. So what I usually do is I'll kind of fold it, fold it, press. And you can kind of get to where You'll kind of roll it a little bit, fold it, and you'll just start this motion. Find you a good rhythm, and just keep going at it for again about a good eight, maybe even ten minutes. Making sure to kind of bring some of that flour back in. Keep going. You don't have to worry about trying to be gentle with it. As a matter of fact, if you can put a little umph behind it, it works even better. And my understanding is the process of kneading, what's happening is you're activating the gluten that is in the flour. All right, this has been about eight minutes or so. As you can see, it's not really that sticky anymore. And it's got this nice like satiny finish here. And that's what we're looking for. So now what we're going to do is kind of pre-shape this into a ball. And all, all you're doing is kind of folding it in on itself and kind of tucking it in. Try 
kind of make a nice tight ball. I think that's probably good enough there. There you go. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this into our back of our bowl here. We're going to cover it up with something nice and air, light and airy. This is just a simple baking cloth, basically. And we're going to put this into the oven. Now remember, I preheated the oven just a little bit. We're looking for around like maybe 100 degrees or so. Huh? You don't want it too hot. We're not trying to bake the bread. We just want to give it a nice warm environment for it to rise. Now, when I say we're going to let it sit for about an hour, the actual goal is for it to double in size. That's usually about an hour. So just keep an eye on your dough and wait for it to double in size. So this is where we're at now, and we'll see it in about an hour. All right, so it's been about an hour, and look at that. Remember how small that was before? Now, it's considerably larger. So what we're gonna do here is I'm going to basically flatten this, just like that. I'm gonna kind of crush it back down. I'm gonna knead it a little bit. Get this out of the way. So we're basically just getting all of the air out of it right now. Now you don't have to work on this too much. All the main kneading already happened. So what we're gonna do right now, is just make sure all the air is out. And you can kind of hear and feel like little air pockets. So we're just kind of working that all out. And that's pretty good right there. So what we want to do is kind of get this to where we're going to cut this in half basically. And I want it to pretty well be even. That looks about right to me. Let's put that in half. I'm going to start with the first one here. Same thing, I'm going to kind of preform this. Now what we're about to do is put this into our bread pans. So I'm going to preform it first. Something simple like that. And then same thing with this one. And kind of like with when we were making a ball, I'm just kind of folding it in on itself. But instead of just a ball, kind of elongating it here. Now my technique is not something you should probably really copy. I'm sure there are better examples of this out there uh, due to the fact that I'm still new at this. But this looks pretty good to me. So what we're going to do is go ahead, let's grab some butter, and let's grease these pans up. And once we've got these all good and greased up, all we're going to do is we're going to take our loaves set it in there and we're gonna let these rise yet again so this time we're again just going to cover them we're going to put them in the oven and we're going to keep an eye on them same thing these will fill out and pretty much double in size again uh, so this could take anywhere between another 30 minutes to an hour so let's find out how long this one takes and we'll be right back all right so it's been about half an hour now and these have risen quite nicely so the only thing left to do now is get these into the oven so I've already preheated it I'm gonna bake it at 350 degrees for about 25 to 30 minutes um, I'm gonna set my timer actually for about 25 minutes and check it and if I think it needs an extra five minutes I'll let it go from there what I'm looking for is for this to turn a nice golden brown
<laughs> there you have it. That's going to do it for us. Thank you for uh, watching. If you haven't already, make sure to hit that uh, subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up. If you want to know when we update new content, make sure to hit the notification bell. Otherwise, see you on the next one. <laughs>